Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Laura and today's video we're going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of March. We're going to do this a little bit different this month. Usually I talk about the books in the order that I read them for the month, but this time we have some business to talk about, which is book madness. And I'm going to share with you the results of how all that went down. If you're new here and you missed it, during the month of March, I posted a poll every day for pretty much the first half of March, asking my subscribers to vote against books that were being paired together in a bracket style competition. So let's talk about the results of that. I let each poll be live and like votable for two days. So what you see, just so you know, like on the polls now today could be different, but I took a screenshot every morning after the second day just to try to make it fair. Week one was Gone Girl versus The Silent Patient and Gone Girl won that round. Week two was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder versus The Thursday Murder Club and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder won that one. Week three was Horror Store versus What Moves the Dead and Horror Store won that round. Week four was Dark Matter versus Project Hail Mary and Dark Matter won that one. Week five was Daisy Jones and the Six versus The Nightingale and The Nightingale won that round. Week six was Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine versus A Man Called O and A Man Called Ove won that round. Week seven was None of This Is True versus Wrong Place, Wrong Time and None of This Is True won that round. Week eight was the final week of those like preliminary rounds and that was Yours Truly versus The Bodyguard and The Bodyguard won that round. Some of these rounds were super close. Some of them there was a clear winner and like stayed the clear winner from the start. Some of them flip-flopped back and forth. It was so much fun for me. I hope it was fun for you guys. I got a lot of fun calls comments and a lot of people you know telling me that they really enjoyed it too and they were kind of on the edge of their seat wanting their book to win. So the next set of polls we started comparing week one winner versus week two winner and then week three winner versus week four winner and so on. So here's the results of that set of rounds. We had Gone Girl versus A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Gone Girl won that round. We had Horror Store versus Dark Matter and Dark Matter won that round. We had The Nightingale versus A Man Called Ove and A Man Called Ove won that round. That round was so close. I think that's the one, if I'm remembering right, where I had to call like a sudden death overtime to have people go and vote and that won by literally Literally just one vote so that was a very close round and then none of this is true versus the bodyguard and none of this is true won that round so then it was essentially down to the final four we had two more voting rounds before we got to the final two books and those final two books were the two that I read for the month of March that was Gone Girl versus Dark Matter and Gone Girl won that round and then we had a man called O versus none of this is true and none of this is true won that round so that means Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn and None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell were the two books that I read and the winners or the final two uh, winners of Book Madness. And I had you guys vote for the final two as well to see what you thought the ultimate winner should be. And you guys chose Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This is the subscriber's chosen winner for Book Madness. Um, but what did I think about these? Let's talk about it. We'll go ahead and start with Gone Girl. This is one of very few books on my tiny little physical TBR shelves. I bought this for my birthday for myself in January. I mostly bought this because one, I know it's a super popular thriller that I had never read before. But the main reason I really wanted to read this is because Gillian Flynn is a Missouri author. She's from Missouri. And I will start off by saying that I loved all of the Missouri, St. Louis, Hannibal area references to this. I'm a sucker for anything like Missouri related. I love my home state. And so that that alone like was an automatic one star rating boost for me. But the bad news is I really disliked the writing style. I ended up getting the audiobook from the Libby app and listened to this on audiobook. I just could not get past even the first chapter with the way that the writing was. But it does read better in audiobook. I think honestly, I think the writing is a little bit like she writes the way that people talk. So 
for like reading this in the physical format I really didn't love but I did enjoy for the most part listening to it on audiobook but I would say that's gonna have to like bump down my star rating I would have DNF'd this had I not been able to get the audiobook so to me like there's no way this could be a five star and the other thing is I really disliked the characters in this book this is a domestic thriller following Nick and Amy they're a married couple they've been married for five years and it's clear from the beginning that their relationship has some problems they've had some financial struggles and they just had problems in their marriage in general they've hit their five-year anniversary and on their five-year anniversary Amy goes missing and Nick looks incredibly suspicious and I won't go any further beyond that other than to say we also get the POV of Amy in the form of her diary entries so we get some of their backstory and it's kind of a slow paced like slow burn we're slowly peeling away the layers of their relationship and the things that have gone on there are some unlikable things that Nick did there are some unlikable things that Amy did and it's not that I'm opposed to having unlikable characters as a main characters that we're following in fact this book also has an unlikable main character in my opinion but I feel like there has to be something that makes it worth reading from these characters perspective you know like there has to be something intriguing about them or some redeeming quality even if they're just like a totally dislikable character like I need something to make me care about their story and care about reading from this perspective and it just didn't for me I don't care what happens to their marriage I don't really care what happens to them like they just felt toxic to me and basic like there was I don't know just nothing really intriguing about this couple I will say like I was entertained um it's messed up like this is a messed up story it's toxic it's disgusting some of the things that the people do in this book um it was a wild time. Entertainment value was high, I think. So I'm landing at like a three star for this. I'm not mad at having spent time listening to the audiobook, although it was pretty long. It was like 20 hours. I'm not keeping this on my physical shelves. I'll be donating this to like a free little library, I think. I'm sorry. I know that was like the winner for this book madness, but just probably wasn't my favorite thriller. This, however, was my first five star thriller. I've never had a perfect five star. I got close with His and Hers by Alice Feeney. To me, like if I was gonna recommend a domestic thriller, by the way, I would recommend His and Hers before I would recommend Gone Girl. I just found that to be a more interesting story. I cared about their relationship and their marriage more than I cared about Gone Girl. Anyway, this is a, another like slow burn, slowly peeling back what's really going on because it's clear kind of from the beginning that something creepy, something fishy is going on with the main character, Josie. Josie is a woman who has been married to an older man for a very long time. She's turning, I think 40, I think it's their 40th birthday. So I don't know, maybe I connected with the characters because I just recently turned 40 this year. She turns 40 and she goes out to celebrate. While they're out to dinner celebrating her birthday, she sees Alex who is a I wouldn't say she's like a podcast like star or celebrity but she has a podcast she's kind of like known in their community and she has a group of friends and she has a husband who's giving her lavish gifts she has things that clearly Josie is lacking in her life and Josie like wants that she's at that turning place in her life where she's wanting more from life than what she's been given and it's clear that Alex Summers has that. And Josie has kind of a hidden past that she wants to tell. So she gets together with Alex Summers and they talk about how like, oh, hey, you know, we have the same birthday. And Josie kind of uses that as her introduction into Alex's life and convinces Alex basically to have a podcast series, have a bunch of podcast episodes, letting Josie tell the story of her life and all of her hidden secrets and it's just an insane time and there's also like some mixed media pieces not only like the podcast um, recordings between Alex and Josie but apparently the story is being turned into a Netflix documentary and those Netflix documentary pieces that are inserted throughout the story are clearly in the future like after something crazy has already happened to the point that they're wanting to make a Netflix documentary now about Josie and Alex and this whole story and how they connected and the wild things that have happened 
since then. I highly enjoyed this in every sense. I thought the characters were interesting. Josie is creepy like there's something kind of stalkerish about her the author just made it so interesting though like you wanted to know like what was really going on or at least i did so to me this was a five star definitely preferred this out of the two but thank you guys so much for participating in book madness i am truly glad that i read both of these like i said even though i didn't love this one i had been wanting to read it for a very long time and i found my first ever five star thriller so thank you guys so much for participating in book madness i really plan to do this again next year let's get on with the rest of the reading um i am going to very shortly talk about the books that I read for my cozy fantasy reading vlog because this is the only reading vlog that I did and I went into a lot of depth already. So instead of going in depth again, I will just kind of briefly go over what I thought about all the books that I read for this cozy fantasy. This was my first time reading cozy fantasies and it was a really fun time overall. Some books I liked more than others. We'll start with the Tea Dragon series. This is a series of middle grade graphic novels. The first book in the series is The Tea Dragon Society. And then we have, which one was next? <laughs> it's been a little minute because these I read at the beginning of March. Um, the Tea Dragon Festival is the next one. And The Tea Dragon Tapestry is the third one in the series. And in my opinion, these books just improve as they go on in the series. The first one, I believe I gave like a three star. And then the second one, I gave a four star. And then I gave a five star. I just really enjoyed this series overall. I thought they were really cute. The graphic illustrations and all of them are just really adorable. To me, the first one didn't feel quite like a full and complete story. We just briefly get introduced to the main characters. There is like some found family, but I just wanted a little bit more from this and more about like the tea dragons and the tea dragon caretaking because it was very minimal on that. But I thought that that was like such an interesting part of the storyline. The second one, we did get a little bit more of a story. Like this felt like a full flushed out story. But again, there were mentions of things about the tea dragons that it was like told but not shown, which for a graphic novel, what a great opportunity to really like show you more about the tea dragons so again I just wanted a little bit more from it and then I think that she finally delivered a really full complete flushed out story we get more of the backstory of Minette and Greta we get a lot more of the tea dragons and their little quirky little personalities and the caretaking of them so to me I think the third book really delivered everything that I was looking for in all three of these but overall it was a really great time and I would say you kind of have to read the first two to really fully appreciate the third one so I would recommend the series as a whole the next one I read for the cozy fantasy vlog was the Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle and I did not really love this one. This follows a unicorn who comes to find out that she may be the last of the unicorns and she kind of like refuses to accept that so she gets word that maybe King Hagrid had something to do with the unicorns and making them all disappear so she sets out on a quest to go and find the rest of the unicorns and see if she can help them. She meets Molly and Schmendrick the magician. Um, Molly is my favorite character out of all of them. This is a YA fantasy novel so it has a lot of that like younger angst and very like melancholy tone which I actually kind of liked it was just I didn't love the writing style he went back and forth from almost sounding how they would talk at like a renaissance festival or like a medieval dinner party you know what I'm saying like one of that type of way of talking which I'm not really used to I'm not a huge like fantasy reader so there's that but then other times it would switch and it would come off as like very modern writing so it's like as soon as I got used to it it kind of like switched the style I don't know I just didn't really love it yeah two and a half star not my favorite of that reading vlog the next book that I read is The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester and this was such a cute story. I gave this one a four and a half. This is a middle grade story that follows Milo, our main character. He is this like bored little boy who's just kind of 
going through the motions of life. I think he's probably depressed, honestly. And he has this phantom toll booth that's mysteriously delivered to his home. So he builds it and drives right through it. And he's transported into this fantasy world where he just comes across like the most bizarre characters. The strange land is ruled by two brothers. We have King Azaz from Dictionopolis and we have the math magician from Digitopolis. He meets Talk the watchdog who is literally like a dog with a watch or a clock on his belly but also becomes like a very like protective sidekick for Milo, the other version of a watchdog. And Milo finds out that King Azaz and the math magician do not get along. And the reason for that is because two princesses, Rhyme and Reason, were banished. And so now that the land has no rhyme or reason, everything is kind of chaotic and nothing is as it should be. And so Milo goes on a quest to find Rhyme and Reason and set them free. I feel like it wasn't a perfect five star for me because I didn't love like the Digitopolis parts as much. Like I was skimming over all of like the numbers and math stuff that was sprinkled in here. There wasn't too much of that though. It was mostly like the fun wordplay and puns and Milo learns a little something from each of the characters that he interacts with. I thought it was a really fun journey to follow along with. Just an overall pleasant reading experience for me. And the final cozy fantasy book that I read was Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I will say like I hesitated on picking this up for so long even though that I know it's a very beloved book by so many. Like so many people were talking about this when it first came out but I was hesitant because I thought I had heard it described as just an orc who opens a coffee shop and that's pretty much it like that's the whole plot is just her running a coffee shop but the characters had so much more depth that there was like an actual like story arc and conflict and there were some antagonists. The coffee shop stuff was really fun and cute and cozy, but I really liked the main character Viv and all of the little characters that she interacted with. I absolutely loved this story from start to finish, so this was a five-star read for me. Then I read Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham. I read this for the Sleep When I'm Dead book club with Reading with Jess, and I always have a great time in that book discussion, but I did not have the best time with this book. This is a new release thriller and honestly the plot is slightly forgettable because I literally finished this just a couple weeks ago at this point and I've already forgotten like the name of the main character. Let's see. Is it Lucy? Oh, Margot. <laughs> Margo is the main character that we're following in this and she is in college. She's getting ready to enter her freshman year or her sophomore year rather. She's finishing up her freshman year at the beginning of this. She has a roommate. She's living in the dorms and she gets introduced to this little group of girls. Um, we have Lucy who's kind of like the leader of their little friend clique. And then we have Sloan and Nicole who are also like Lucy's friends and roommates. And they're currently living off campus next to a fraternity house. And Lucy invites Margot to move out of the dorms with her current roommate and come and live with them. And it's just following like their life um, together, living together, and kind of like the college atmosphere I really enjoyed. We come to find out that Margot's best friend, friend that she had had since she was a child and on, suddenly died in a tragic death, but we really don't know like why the circumstances exactly about it, but we know that there's something a little suspicious about Margot's best friend's death. And you're kind of finding that maybe some people that Margot is around now in her so entering her sophomore college years may have a connection to her past, including one of the boys who moves into the fraternity house. And so I liked the slow burn, slowly peeling, peeling away the layers like an in, like trying to get to the truth that's at the middle because we know that something is not right. Something's not right maybe with this group of girls. Maybe something's not right about the death of Marco's best friend. Maybe somebody in her circle currently had something to do with that, but we don't know all the pieces to it. But where I feel like this book kind of went wrong for me is that you get to a certain point in a thriller where you just like want it to 
pick up the pace. Both None of This Is True and Gone Girl kind of do that. They kind of have that same similar like story arc where it's slow burn at first, but man, once like this certain plot point hits, it really picks up the pace and it's like a page turner from that point on. And I felt like this book never got there for me. Even when something is revealed, I don't want to spoil what, but like some main thing is revealed in this about one of the characters where it's clear that like they're not who they seem to be. You wanted it to pick up the pace at that point and it just kept slowly peeling away more of the backstory and it kept like going back into the past. The timelines felt really messy and you just never really felt like it was high stakes and I think it's because they kept going back to the past and kept that slow burn pace just a little too long in my opinion. So this ended up as like a two and a half star for me and I hated that because it honestly at the beginning felt like a four or five star. Not the worst read but yeah I just mm -mm, I didn't really love it. I would read something from this author again. A Flicker in the Dark I think is one of her popular ones and that was mentioned during our book club discussion that a lot of people liked that one even though they didn't like this one so I might go back and read Flicker in the Dark. I'm not saying never for this author again it's just this wasn't a success for me. I also had high hopes for the month of March for the Galaxy-a-thon read-a-thon that I was participating in but I got sick. So I was pretty sick for a good chunk of the time and then my stepdaughter was sick as well and I ended up scrapping that reading vlog. But I did read two out of the six books that I had planned on reading for galaxy a -thon. I'm not super happy about that because the four books that I'm gonna have to send back to their library I really do want to read. So that's where we're at with the galaxy a -thon. But I did read two books. I read Bad Astronauts by Grady Hendrix. And this is a space novella that was, again, another like wild time. I loved Bad Astronauts. I love Grady Hendrix. That's no surprise. Um, I gave Bad Astronauts a four and a half stars. The premise of Bad Astronauts is that it follows the main character, Walter. He's an unlikable main character, but like so intriguing. Walter is this older former astronaut who is now like an alcoholic. Walter just says things and does things where you're just like, oh my god, Walter, you can't say that. You can't do that. You're just thinking that in your head about him the whole time. He is such a redneck. <laughs> Like I said, Walter is a former astronaut and his cousin is a current astronaut who gets abandoned by some catastrophe um, that happens. He's abandoned on the International Space Station and NASA is like defunding their program and it's unknown, it's unclear if the government has any plans to go and well rescue Walter's cousin. And so Walter's like, I am taking this as my own personal mission to build a rocket in my backyard. It gets social media attention and he has like thousands of people from all walks of life that come to his property and start helping him build this rocket that join him on this mission. Some people think he's absolutely crazy. The government is on to him clearly. Um, and it's just like, you know, this whole entire time, like this can't possibly end well. And then we switch from Walter's perspective to like an FBI agent who gets involved. And the things that the FBI agent is doing are questionable and clearly not all by the book. It's like, you know, that's not going to end well either. It's not going to end well on either side of the coin for this situation. And so it was just such a wild ride. Um, the ending made me tear up a little bit. Grady Hendrix, I just think, is somebody who writes from the heart. The overall theme of this, I think, is like hope and just wanting to have a sense of hope that, you know, even if we feel like the government fails us, we can come together as a community and do something for the greater good. I think Grady Hendrix leaned like a little too into some stereotypes at times, but this was like one of his very first creative writing endeavors. It's been rewritten by him since it originally came out. Bad Astronauts was first called Occupy Space when it first came out, but um, yeah, I read it on ebook and thoroughly enjoyed this experience. The final book that I finished, actually um, Gone Girl and None of This Is True, I actually finished at the beginning of April, but of course I wanted to talk about it 
for my March wrap up since that's when Book Madness happened. Um, and I also technically finished this book in April, but I started it during Galaxy a Thon Readathon, um, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by D Douglas Adams. This is actually a reread for me because I read this a really, really long time ago. Like we're talking a decade or more ago. And I enjoy this for the most part. Um, it's not a five star read for me. I got a little bit lost with the plot at times, but this is a very funny book. If you like the British style humor that is the Monty Python, like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I love that movie when I was like in college. And this book is 100% that same style of like humor as Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We have the main character who is a human, Arthur, who is about to have his house demolished. And then he comes across his friend Ford who's like, listen, it's not gonna matter because earth is about to get demolished actually and so there's just like a weird sense of like irony with that whole beginning. Ford apparently has been like abandoned on the planet earth so he's been studying humans and he knows a way to hitchhike essentially and get himself and Arthur off of earth before it gets blown up and so the rest of it's just kind of like a bumpy clunky space journey. There's not really like a known destination for most of this. It feels like they're just kind of bumbling about throughout space like hitchhiking the ride and stumbling across other space creatures and characters. Um, it was very interesting like I said like read it for the humor. Read it for just like the weird time that this book is. If you like Monty Python it's probably a good indication that you will enjoy this one. So I did enjoy it for the most part, but again, I just felt like plot was all over the pace, so I, I can't give it like a five star, but I did enjoy it four star read for me. And that is it. That's probably like the most books that I've ever read in a month and I think it was too much honestly. <laughs> Obviously because I didn't even finish reading all of those in the month of March. I finished some of them in April but that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more from me. My next video will either be like a cozy mystery reading vlog or maybe like a book tag because I've been tagged in a couple of like fun little book tags that I haven't done yet and I really want to. So stay tuned. I will see you guys again next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.